So we are looking at multiplying. So we are going to do our factor, multiply by our factor to get our product, which is our answer when we're doing a multiplication number sentence. So we are going to start by looking at short multiplication. So that's when we're multiplying a number by a single digit and we've laid it out in our columns and making sure all the numbers are in the correct columns. We're gonna start by multiplying our factor by our ones, then our tens, then our hundreds, then our thousands. So we're gonna start by doing three multiplied by four, which equals 12. We can't fit 12 into one column, so we put our two, and then we're exchanging those 10 ones for one 10 underneath. Then we are going to do three multiplied by 80, or three times eight, which would be 240, and then we need to remember to add the one underneath. So we're multiplying and then we're adding on that extra one underneath. So we've got our two in the hundreds column and then we're going to have our five in the tens column. So three multiplied by eight equals 24 plus the one equals 25, so 25 tens. And then if we cross off the one, we remember that we've added it on. Then we've got three multiplied by 700 or three times seven, which equals 21 plus the two underneath, which equals 23, or 23 hundredths, or two thousands and three hundredths. We've then got three multiplied by six, which equals 18, plus the two, which equals 20. So we've got three times 6,000, which would equal 18 thousands, plus that two underneath, which equals 20 thousands. So we exchanged, so everything's in the correct columns. Okay, so we are going to do our long multiplication next. So we're going to do 3,678 multiplied by 54. So it's really important when we set this up that we leave two lines here for our multiplying and then one for our product, for our answer when we're multiplying two numbers together. So the first thing we're going to do is 3,678 multiplied by four. So we can always pretend that that 50 isn't even there and it's just very similar or exactly the same as that short multiplication. And then we're going to do 3,678 multiplied by 50. So by our five tens. And then we're going to add our answers together. Now, when we set up our long multiplication, we can also put our placeholder straight away in here because when we're multiplying a whole number by a multiple of 10, it's always going to end in a zero. So if we set it up straight away, it means that we won't forget to put this in. And then we can get started. So we're going to do four multiplied by eight, which equals 32. Then four multiplied by seven tens, which would be 28 tens. And then we add our three underneath. So that would be 31. And I'm keeping my numbers nice and small underneath and just crossing them off when we've used them. If you need to remind yourself, you can go back. Oh, I've done four times eight. And then I did four times seven. So now I need to do the four times the six, the four times the six hundreds, which would equal 24 hundreds plus the three hundreds we've already exchanged, which would be 27 hundreds. And then we've got four times the 3,000. So four times three equals 12. So that'd be 12,000 plus the 2,000s underneath. So that would be 14,000. And there's nothing more left to multiply by the four. So we are finished on that row. Really important that we're keeping everything nice and in line. We've then got everything multiplied by our 50. So we've got 50 times eight or five times eight, which would be 40. So we put our zero and we exchange the four underneath. So the reason we've got that zero here is 50 times eight is actually 400. We've been doing five times eight to just help us, but actually it'd be 400. So that's why the value of the four is really, really important. That placeholder is important. So we've done five times eight, we've got 50 times 70 or five times seven to help us out, which would be 35 plus the four which equals 39. I'm keeping my columns in line. Then we've got five times six, which equals 30, plus the three equals 33. So then I've got my 50 times my 3,000, or my five times three, which would be 
15 or 150,000 plus the three ten thousands underneath already, which would be 18. I then need to add both of my answers together because I partitioned that 54 and then I need to add it back together. So 2 plus 0 equals 2, 1 plus 0 equals 1. I'm going to use my number bonds here, so I'm going to split my 7 into a 1 and 6 so that I know that 1 plus 9 equals 10, and then I've got 6 more, so it would be 16. 4 plus 4 equals 8, 8 plus 1 equals 9, and then 0 plus 1 equals 1. So my product is 198,612. So we are going to look at dividing next. So we've got our dividend divided by our divisor equals our quotient. So you've got your dividend, which is the amount you're starting with. We're then going to share it equally into this many groups. And then our answer, how many we've got in those equal groups is our quotient. And then we'll see if we've got a remainder or not at the end. Uh, we are going to look at short division and long division. You do not need to worry when it comes to long division. You can do short division or long division for whether it's a single digit or a two digit number as your divisor. You can just decide what you prefer, but we'll show you both options. So we've got 9,163 divided by four. Now, if you find your times tables difficult, my recommendation for short and long division is you can just drop that times table down to start with. If you're confident with your times tables, that's fine. But if not, just go up to nine times and that will help you out. So my first question is, how many equal groups of four are there in nine? So I can just count down, there's one, two, 12 would be too much because I haven't got 12, I've only got nine. So I've got one, two whole groups of nine with one left over because the difference between eight and nine is one. So I've got two whole groups, which makes eight, and then my remainder, my leftover, is one. How many equal groups of four are there in 11? One, two, so two again, but this time my remainder is the difference between eight and 11, which is three. How many whole groups of four have I got in 36? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got nine whole groups with zero remainders. There's no remainders because 36 is a multiple of four. How many equal groups of four have I got in three? I've got zero, so I must write that zero. That's really important. And then I've got three left over. So there's a few different ways we can write that. When we start to get to year five and six, we want to be writing it as a fraction. So we've got three left over. And if we had a whole group, our divisor becomes our denominator. So in, for this, it would be three quarters. We've got three left out of a whole group of four. Okay, we've now got our long division. So I've set it up in the same way. So we're going to do 6,379 divided by 16. And I've written out already my multiples of my divisor. Now there's a couple of different ways we can do this. So you could partition, so 16, is 10 plus six, which equals 16. You could keep writing your tens and keep writing your sixes and then just add them back together. Or you could do repeated addition. So you could start with 16 and keep adding on 16. I find if I do this method, it's quite handy to circle my multiples as I'm getting there so we don't accidentally count the 16s and then we can keep adding on 16. So it's completely up to you how you list your multiples. Okay, we're going to do exactly the same thing to start with. So how many 16s are there in six? There'll always be zero if it's a two digit number here. How many 16s are there in 63? I can just count down one, two, three. So really important, there are three equal groups, so I need to write that number straight away on top. Now, if I was doing a short division method, I would just calculate that remainder in my head. But rather than doing that, when we do our long division, we write down what we got to underneath, and then we take it away. So exactly the same as what you do in your head, 
but we're writing it down. So we're doing a quick takeaway. So we've got 13 take away 8, which equals 5. 5 take away 4 equals 1. Now my remainder is 15. With short division, we were just writing the remainder up the top, but this time we bring the next number down instead. So rather than writing the 15 up here, we've just brought the next number down instead. So now my question is, how many equal groups of 16 are there in 157? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 9 whole groups, so we must put at the top. Rather than just doing this in my head, I'm going to write my 144, because that was my 9 equal groups, and take it away. So I've got 7 take away 4 equals 3, 5 take away 4 equals 1, 1 take away 1 equals 0. Rather than putting my remainder 13 up the top, I'm going to bring the 9 down so it's really clear what number it is. So how many equal groups of 16 are there in 139? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there are 8 equal groups. That equals 128. So then I can do 9 take away 8 equals 1. 3 take away 2 equals 1 and 1 take away 1 equals 0. Now I've got nothing else left to bring down. I've got no other groups of 16 and 11. So 11 must be our remainder. So I can either write remainder 11 or I can write my 11 sixteenths. So it's a very similar method, but you're showing and you're calculating your remainder on the paper rather than doing it in your head. So when we are multiplying and dividing, we've looked at our formal method. So we've looked at short and long multiplication and short and long division. The only difference is when we are multiplying and dividing by 10, 100 or 1000 or any multiple of 10 like that. So we are going to think of this as place value. So we don't want to be laying it out in the columns. We want to be thinking about it in our place value columns because our numbers are getting 10 times bigger or 10 times smaller. So anytime our number is getting bigger, we're going to move it this way, so to the left of our place value chart. And anytime it's getting smaller, we are going to move it this way, so to the right of our place value chart. And the number of places we're going to move it are the number of zeros in whatever it is we're multiplying and dividing by. Let's have a little go. So if I have the number 78 and I'm going to multiply 78 by 10, that means I move each digit one space to the left. So I'm going to move my seven tens. That's going to get 10 times bigger. So it's going to become seven hundreds. My eight ones are going to get 10 times bigger. So they are going to go to eight tens. And then I need to put a zero placeholder in. If I was going to, do, to multiply 78 by 100, everything would move two spaces to the left. So my seven would move one, two, because it's getting 100 times bigger, which is 10 times 10. My eight would move one, two spaces, so that would move to eight hundreds, because eight multiplied by 100 is 800. And then I would have two placeholders. If I was going to do 78 and divide it by 10, that means everything, each part of the number would get 10 times smaller. So my eight ones, if I divide that by 10, would become eight tenths. And my seven tens would become seven ones because 70 divided by 10 equals seven. I've got to remember to put my decimal point in. So 78 divided by 10 would be 7.8. If I had 78 and I was dividing it by 100, everything would move two places to the right. So it would move, my eight would move two places and my seven would move two places and I'd make sure my decimal point was in there. So I've got 78 divided by 100 equals 0 0.78. So when we are multiplying and dividing by 10, 100 and 1000, we are thinking of it as place value and moving those digits and um, because of them getting 10 times bigger or smaller. If I had 640 
and I wanted to make my number 1,000 times bigger, then I would move my, all of my digits three places to the left. So I've got three places to the left. So my six would go one, two, three. My four would go one, two, three. My zero would go one, two, three. And I would put my placeholders in as well. So 614 multiplied by 1,000 would equal 640,000. Now we don't want to say that we've just added those zeros on because 640 plus zero is still 640. It does look like that and it can help us. But we just have to be careful because if I have 9.6 and I want to multiply that by 10 and I just add a zero on the end, I've still got 9.6. So that's why it's really important that we are moving our digits along so 9.6 multiplied by 10 would equal 96.